Hey there guys, Headphones in here back with a hot take review and so for this review it's going to be the season 2 premiere for The Mandalorian, notably chapter 9, The Marshal. So I'm going to start off this particular review with a spoiler alert warning um, related to the plot point of this episode but also what we see at the end of the episode. So I don't want to spoil it for you if you haven't seen it so definitely no problems and no issues if you skip the episode for now, watch the episode, then come back and listen to my review. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. So season two picks up right where um, season one left off. We have the Mandalorian out on a quest to find the homeworld for the um, child, either by way of the world itself or other people of his kind, or maybe even the Jedi like him or other people who use the Force. So um, with that quest, he's also looking for other Mandalorians, or he's planning to per go through the network of Mandalorians and the separate Mandalorian clans to see what information he can gather to get that information about the child or and essentially reunite him with his people. So um, when he visits the cantina that we see in the opening sequence of the film, he's directed to go visit a Mandalorian who potentially lives on... Tatooine. Uh, he does make exclaim that he's been there. He hasn't. He's heard of no rumors of any Mandalorians on the planet. But as it turns out, when he lands in Mos Espa, that there is, um, or what he learns is that there is potentially a hidden town or lost town on Tatooine that the Mandalorian is rumored, or the Tatooine's Mandalorian is rumored to be um, living in. Um, named Mos Pelgo doesn't and it doesn't appear in any of the maps because it existed pre um, fall of the empire potentially even pre empire um, most likely around the time of the republic so that's why it doesn't appear anywhere but the lady we meet in season one who at the Mos Espa port lets him know that there is an empty region where the um, town should appear um, we learned that it was a mining town so that um is of particular note because when we learn that the, of who the Mandalorian and quote Mandalorian is because he's not a real Mandalorian is calling himself the Marshal wearing Mandalorian armor. Um, he's played by Timothy Oliphant who plays the Marshal in Justified and Deadwood so a fitting role there. And that's not really anything to further the plot but we um, do find that he purchased um, Boba Fett's armor not directly to my way of the show, but because of the markings on the armor and the color and shade and all of that. Um, when the Empire fell and the town was overrun by slavers, so he um, escaped with some of the slavers' loot and was rescued by Jawas, who had um, inadvertently picked up the armor of Boba Fett. So the episode brings into question what did happen to Boba Fett after the events in Return of the Jedi. So is he alive or dead? What's going on there? And how did the Jawas manage to get a hold of his armor? Um, so I'll touch base on that in a little bit. Um, but essentially, um, the town is... So I guess it becomes a dead-end hunt for the Mandalorian because um, the Marshal is not a Mandalorian. He's just wearing Mandalorian armor to help protect the people of the town and keep the peace so a good way to use armor so it's kind of it's even though he's not mandalorian it's a kind of noble way to protect the town but essentially the mandalorian wants to keep the armor and the only way to get it is to help the marshal kill off the a great dragon that's been terrorizing the town and, and getting worse and worse um, the only way to kill off the Kray Dragon, as they learn, is that they, they're going to have to team up with the Tusken Raiders in order to um, do that, because they need the numbers, and the Tusken Raiders, as it turns out, are also on a mission to kill this Kray Dragon. So the people of the of uh, Mos um, Pelgo are not too happy to um, work with the Tusken Raiders, but the Tuskens make a deal that if they're allowed to keep the remains of the Tuscan or the crate dragon and the crate dragon pearl inside, then um, they will no longer raid the town, and they are tr they promise to keep their word. So, as it turns out, and this is a small side benefit of the episode, that they actually promise to do that. So it appears that will be done. Um, and this is where the episode gets really good in that 
now that we are now that the people of Mos Pelgo and the Tuscan Raiders are on a uh, mission to work together to take down the Kray Dragon, we essentially get a live action version of what we see in the video game Knights of the Old Republic, where on the one of the or one of the or the main mission of the to get the sort of the star map on Tatooine is to kill the Kray Dragon. This, uh, and so um, part of it is t- the point to uh, take down the Kray Dragon is you have to work with a uh, uh, Twilight to um, get to lure some Banthas into or to the outside of the cave so that the Kray Dragon is lured outside and the Kray Dragon is going to be killed with some mines. So mostly what we see here, um, taking down the Kray Dragon is not quite as easy as it would seem as the video game would make it seem, but essentially what happens is that um, it's the same thing because um, they do lure some Banthas in to bring the Kray Dragon out. It doesn't come out quite as much as they hoped it would. Um, and they do have mines placed in the ground outside the cave to take it down, but it is by no means enough. So they do have to fight with the dragon and um, use a lot more mines than they expected. But when you play the game and you watch this episode, you do realize how similar they are. It's essentially, as far as I'm concerned, the same mission. Um, but rather than uh, fighting the Tuscan Raiders and uh, pissing them off like you do in the video game, you do have to work alongside them here in this case. Um, the, and as on a side tangent, you can make peace with the Tuscan Raiders if you um, let them know that you're if you're going to leave them in peace and stop raiding. So it's actually a reversal of what, you're gonna, what happens in the show where in the video game, if you promise to stop raiding their lands and leave them alone, then they'll stop um, raiding the human spaceports. And um, I don't know after killing the Kray Dragon if they continue to leave you alone or not, but um, in any case, um, you do get a mission in both cases where if you make a deal with the Tuscan Raiders to help them, then they promise to help you and they do keep their word as far as uh, promising not to raid the human settlements. So it's kind of leave them alone and they'll leave you alone. And they, since they've been around on the planet for a long time, it is kind of their land. So it's a matter of not looting what they feel is or what they, is kind of rightfully theirs. Uh, but I digress. Um, so basically, the purpose of the whole idea behind taking the Kray Dragon is to lure it out with some Banthas. You take it down with a lot of mines. A big fight and battle ensues where, with the humans and Tuscans working together. Um, the Mandalorian and the Marshal work together to um, lure the uh, dragon out. And essentially, the Mandalorian just about he protects the bantha that has the bulk of the explosives it looks like the mandalorian gets eaten and could have fallen into the trope of oh no what happened and end the episode there but he does um um do something inside the cray dragon that forces it to open its mouth so he's able to escape using his jetpack and then since the bantha with the explosives is still inside he lets up all of the explosives kills the cray dragon and they win the day um, so the extra benefit here is that as the Tuscans are um, cutting up the dragon and um, preparing his body to eat, they do find the great dragon pearl inside, which is another reference to Knights of the Old Republic, in that you find once you take down the great dragon and you, if you visit the cave or if you, if you, you have to loot the body of the dragon, but... Um, in any case, you do find a Kray Dragon Pearl, which you can use to power your lightsaber if you want to use that particular pearl. So they don't really mention any of that because lightsabers are not really a thing to in the, the Mandalorian as of yet, aside from the dark saber. But um, you do, or the Tuscan Raiders do find the Kray Dragon Pearl. So I found that found that as a nifty side reference as well. So with that being done, the Marshal stays true to his word and. Gives up the Mandalorian, or gives the Mandalorian armor up to the Mandalorian, and he, the Mandalorian, heads off on his way. So that would normally be the end of the episode, but we do get a another overview or panoramic shot as a Mandalorian is leaving with a figure who's watching his progress. The pro- epi- and then the episode ends with this mysterious figure turning, and we 
learn none other than this is a uh, clone of Django Fett because it's basically the character played by Django Fett in um, Star Wars Episode 2 Attack of the Clones and for me it le would lead me to believe that this is Django Fett because that's the last we saw him as of the end of Return of the Jedi we would uh, could assume that he was eaten by the Sarlacc pit but because he had his armor on I think he was spit out um, because of all the armor and couldn't be digested we can now safely assume that he did survive the film and the events of the movie so um my guess and hope is that he's going to meet up with the Mandalorian or he's gonna you know, I want to talk to the Mandalorian to get his armor back but that's all speculation from here but it's nice to see that we do potentially have the return of Boba Fett into the Star Wars franchise and now as an old man because he has been aging unaltered since his time as a child in Attack of the Clones and I'm kind of curious to see what kind of information they bring up with his, as his experiences now that he is much older and he's been living in potentially in Recluse probably as um yeah but I guess it's a Recluse uh, living around in uh, on Tatooine and since no one's seen him without his armor no one knows who, who he is so he can live in anonymity so that's the end of this particular episode so um, overall, I give it a very good rating. I would give it a rating of probably about an A- minus to an A, definitely in the A range, because we get to see a live-action battle with a Kray Dragon, and we get to see something that's been in the Star Wars video game universe come to life. So, overall, it was very well done, whether it's the same... Um, or I don't want to say that it's the same cave as the one with the star map. That would have been an interesting touch, probably something that's a bit too far unless they somehow make it canon tied in with the child's race. But overall, a very good episode. I enjoy seeing the battle with the Kray Dragon, um, the difficulty in taking it down because it is a Kray Dragon. Um, we do hear the call that the Mandalorian uses to, um, or the Tuscan Raider, I feel, which I think they both did, but to bring it out. The conversation, and then little things like the conversations between the Mandalorian and the Tusken Raiders as they're talking was a nice touch. A uh, little bit of backstory with the Sarlacc pit, because again, the conversation between the Mandalorian and the Marshal was good, and the potential that there are multiple Sarlacc pits on Tatooine um, because the great dragons do eat them. So, um, an interesting little touch tidbit there that. There could be multiple Sarlacc pits, and that Kray dragons are strong and powerful enough to eat a Sarlacc pit, so overall good news there. So that is all for um, this particular review, so the current goal is to review each episode week by week, and if needed, do a recap of the whole season once the show is done. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, feedback, or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is PatelN01.com for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. Um, I'll have a link to the video or in the show notes for the video as far as um, the Crate Dragon and Star Map uh, mission on. Uh, Tatooine from Knights of the Old Republic, but that video can also be found on YouTube at youtube.com slash PatelN01. Um, I do have a playlist for the gameplay that I did. Um, I think it's the third or fourth video related to Tatooine, but as I mentioned, I'll have a direct link to the video in the show notes, so once you've seen the episode and you want to check out how it looked in the video game, then that will also be an option for you to take a look at. But thanks for tuning into this particular episode, and until next time.